In honor of Jim Carolla's 92nd birthday, here's a list of all the things Adam Carolla will do before he dies. Direct a movie called Awesome so that entertainment shows will have to refer to him as Awesome Director Adam Carolla. Then follow it up with the sequel, Hung Like a Rhino. Just one of the things Adam will do before he dies. Let's get back to the Adam Carolla Show. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Make a movie called Awesome. All right. What do we got? Well, I want to bring back to the LA Times real quick just because we have Matt here. Mm -hmm. So these these layoffs, um, just like conspiracy theory predictions, uh, is this going to be like the great reawakening? Are they restructuring for something that you actually want? Or are they just going to continue making <laughs> bad decisions? Like, what are we, what do we predict is going to happen? Because, it, because from what I'm seeing, Patrick Soon Shiong is the one who's doing all the commenting, making all the statements. Is he taking it back from Nika? Like, what? Well, based on what's been uh, published the last few days, no, they published their endorsement of George Gascon, one of the most vile pieces of journalism I've ever seen in my right. life. I mean, just completely de- devoid of any reality whatsoever about how he did such a good job and how he's, um, uh, you know, he, he made promises that people supported and he's implementing those and they've served the people of Los Angeles, completely psychotic. Uh, Patrick Soon Xiong, he's shown so far he doesn't have the courage or the manhood to go ahead and do this and do the right thing. He's not going to do that. There's no chance. The only chance that the LA times turns around is if it gets so painful for him and it is getting very painful and i can tell you i'll tell you why i know a little bit more inside baseball in just a second um it might get to the point where he cries uncle and sells it um not that i've and not that I'm criticizing Rick Caruso or that I, I have told him directly this, but um, Rick Caruso spent a lot of money running for mayor. If he wants to be, if he wants his most highest ROI uh, function or activity, go convince, go buy this puppy off Patrick and turn That'd it into something sensible. Yeah, um, you know, and I plan on delivering that message to some of his people. Um, no, the best case scenario, realistically, with Sun Xiang and this restructuring, is not that the LA Times becomes a respectable publication again. It's that it's now so shamed and now is is held in such low standard and light that the impact that it has recently had, even when it's not considered, it's not really a highly uh, circulated newspaper, but still has the power of the endorsement that more people just ignore it. There could be after this, because like I said, most people don't pay attention. Most people don't realize that the LA Times sucks. This might, this is the type of story that makes headlines, that gets people's attention, might make them realize that, oh, this paper is not worth listening to This could be like Harvard- or a uh, little bit pen or MIT that people don't pay attention, but then you get onto the radar and Cur- that becomes yes. the beginning of the end. Right. I don't have any faith in anybody with bad ideas uh, reconsidering their ideas. Um, okay. Everybody I've known with bad ideas has ridden those bad ideas into the grave. And I kind of got, I did my experiment with COVID because uh, I shouted about everything uh, COVID all the time. Everyone shouted at me that I was, you know, baby killer and I hated grandpa and uh, I hated kids and people of color and they attacked me. And then I turned out to be right about everything and I've not heard any apology. So uh, the uh, people, especially hard left people, they do not have a way to change course. And I don't know why it's baked in. I think it's because they're lying. I think it's because when you're doing something earnestly and you mean it, and then you're incorrect, you will be quick to correct yourself. But if you're lying, you won't correct yourself because you know psychologically that you were lying and that the correction is admittance of your lying. So everyone I've known that's just been organically and legitimately and mistakenly off about something immediately comes back and corrects. But the people you argue with who are basically lying never correct themselves because that's an admittance of lying. Uh, You know, I got to be honest, I think you're giving them too much credit because I don't think they're lying. I think they're really this dumb. (laughs) <laughs> All right. Yeah, and they're really this dumb, but the reason that they dig their heels in so deeply is because they're motivated by the idea that they're the good guys. And yeah. I'm telling you, more powerful than drugs, more powerful than gambling, more powerful than money. The idea that you are on the right side, that you are the compassionate, savvy, uh, uh, morally, morally righteous one is more powerful than anything people underestimate it, and that's why they dig their heels I in. I totally agree with that, but... When Rochelle Walensky is talking about reopening schools and then backtracking after the school unions get to her and tell her, shut up, bitch, and go up there on that podium and say, we shouldn't open schools. She's not a dumb person. 
and she's clearly lying at, at, at that point. And when Dr. Fauci has no thoughts about Black Lives Matter rallies when he's shutting down <laughs> churches and ballparks, uh, he's not dumb and he is lying. And when Joe Biden says, I've never spoke to my son about business ever or anyone in my family about any of their business, he's lying. Like there is sure, but you're describing, a fair bit of lying going you're, you're, you're on descri- out there. You're describing public servants, public figures, right? That's yeah. that's it, kind of threaded into their professional life and and everything about their life. I'm talking more so, but the people on a day to day basis oh, that you might shooting find the tweets, the people who the people who are the reason that a Joe Biden or a Karen Bass or a Nithya Rahman are in office, like they think they're the good guys. Oh, they, oh, they definitely yeah. not, not even it, it. It transcends good. They think they're righteous. Yes, it's further than good. Absolutely. All yeah. Right, so. What about the New York Times, though? Because the New York Times seems like it's kind of going going the other way, right? Well, the New York Times hit its nadir or something when they had that Tom Cotton op-ed yeah. about <laughs> calling out the National Guard, God forbid, when Seattle was burning for the 26th so night in being a row. Pillaged. <laughs> <laughs> being, right. Police stations are being taken over. We've established a no-crime zone called CHOP. Where the police are not welcome in Ooh, Portland. The autonomous zone. Everyone the forgets about that zone. one. Right. And he had the temerity to suggest maybe the National Guard should get involved and put an end to this. Right. And the editor that let that op-ed run was run out. So, Did you see his piece in The Economist just lighting the, the New York Times on fire? It's very good. Oh, wow. No, oh, no. He, he went. It, oh, I think I did hear about yeah, it. Yeah, I, I highly recommend it. Um, one of the few pieces that The Economist has put in front of the paywall. And he said in a maybe more you know cerebral manner, more journalistic manner, a lot of stuff that we've discussed here today about the deterioration of the world of journalism, of, ha- of why and how these uh, outlets that, you know, everyone counts on these these outlets to make sense. Like these are sense making institutions. You have to trust them Why they're no longer trustworthy, why they do not perpetuate, you know, interesting or good ideas. Um, and the factors that gave rise to that and his experiences, it's it was, you know, not the way that I would have phrased it, but uh, very much, I think, a, a uh, insightful explanation of what's gone wrong with journalism over the last decade. All right. So All right. New York Times. Yeah, I don't I don't know if they're trying to correct course or not. They've got a little bit of I because. think they they realized it was going to hurt the bottom line. Yeah. Right. Same thing with Sun Xiang recently. Right. Yeah. Uh, it got that bad. So they're not as they're the New York Times is not as bad as it was 2017 to 2021. I don't think so. Um, but it's still far worse than it should be. And we're going to have to see it's going to be fascinating in the next couple of years or maybe the next five or six years to see how the New York Times deals with Trump the sequel. Right, that would be interesting. Yeah, first, yeah. Trump round one. I mean, they lost their freaking minds. The shit that was coming out of the New York Times <laughs> starting about early 2016 through 2021, I was like, I couldn't fucking believe it. Um, they've set, you know, that some of the, the temperature has gone down a little bit. You know, the 20% of the journalists there that aren't insane, they've seemed to be elevating more and, and they're not printing some. They got rid of Taylor Lorenz. They got rid of a couple of these other people. Um is the New York Times going to just go complete Babylon B level parody nutso trying to go after Donald Trump on round two? That's going to be interesting to see. Well, they weren't so far off. They got Pulitzer Prizes for the whole uh, Russia oh, yes. collusion thing. Super so. meaningful uh, credentials <laughs> yeah, in this day They were awarded Pulitzer yeah. Prizes for being wrong about a story for three years. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, I don't know. Now, since you brought up Trump, I, that, that Biden clip at the women's rally. I, I'm, yeah. I'm in love with that. Somebody, oh, wait, wait, who, who, Dave Rubin uh, tweeted this one. I don't know if you've seen this one, Matt. It's really, it's, uh, it's not a good thing, but I'll, we'll play it for you. We'll teach Donald Trump an, a valuable lesson. Don't mess with the men in America unless you want to get the benefit. Dear God. Yeah, sounds like. When we do one of those live podcasts at the whiskey tasting <laughs> convention, <laughs> yeah, <Being Dawson. laughs> about hour, about hour or two. Jesus so Christ! The Ace yeah, I, I don't know that he's going to be capable of going. I, I well, don't. That's the plan. You, they're they're locking him away. Is there any way I can make one phone scoot. call if you want want to keep me? Or is it, yeah, can I make one phone call? I'll be yeah. back. Yeah, I, go ahead. don't mess with women unless you want to get the benefits. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's that's essentially what he said, which makes no sense. But 
there was a lot of slurring in that whole thing. He's been at Whiskey X for a long time. Now. <laughs> it sounds like you want to say women and America at the same time. Oh, oh I so thought it was women in America. Women in America. Yeah. So, so don't yeah. mess with women, women in, in America, America unless, unless you, you want, want the benefits. Unless you want to get the benefits. Let's listen again. All right. Don't mess with women in America unless you want to get the benefits. So it doesn't make sense, and it's not good. Because I want to get the benefits. I, I, like I the love benefits. benefits. I mean, that's why you mess with women in America. So to get the I benefits. think I'm going to start messing with women right. in America. Um, now, everyone says, why are all the women behind him cheering? And the answer is they can read the teleprompter right. mixed with his cadence. They're just, oh. a, they're just a crowd of dumb, unemployable. Well, we need to find these well, women because I need to know what that teleprompter yeah, said. They are the too. only ones that know. Does does somebody is there some transcript? Oh poor, poor sign language. There's a guy. lot of good ones on Twitter <laughs> that just say Shannon is going to be right. No, but I don't see a transcript. Main attempt. Yeah, when we were doing uh, Adam and Drew earlier. I was trying to find a transcript, and it kept saying inaudible, inaudible. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I don't think he's going to debate Trump. I'll just no. I'll put that out there. That's early. the plan. Oh. Right. He he will refuse to debate. But he's not going to say, I won't debate Trump because I can't form a sentence. He's going to say, I don't debate Hitlerian dictators. Exactly. He's going he's to abstain to defend democracy. I would argue if you really hate Hitlerian dictators, you should go whoop up on them in a debate and take them down. Give that's, them a live mic. That's right. Let them say some things <laughs> well, and call them out on it. Bill O'Reilly's on your side hmm. because he says the only Democrat who could beat Trump is... Michelle Obama. Yeah. I, you know, first, okay. Are there any crazy ideas anymore? I say nay. <laughs> nay. I say every, I, every crazy idea is on the table for me. Yeah. Um, I think there, there are plenty of discussions about Barack Obama spending a lot of time in D.C. and hanging around and pulling some strings and shoehorning some policy. So, you know, what is Biden's policy? I don't know. How much of it is Biden's? How much of it is wink, wink, nudge, nudge Obama policy? Uh, he seems to have an interest. And in, in he's, not, he's not just going off into the sunset. He, he right. wants some interest. He has some interest in shaping our society. Remember, hope and change. And remember, we were four days away from fundamentally changing this society. That was his thing. He wanted to fundamentally change it. Uh, I don't think he captured that dream. But if he got his wife in there, obviously right. he can't do a third term. But there's nothing in the Constitution about laying in bed every night with the person who is doing their first term and you telling yeah. them what you want them to do. I've heard sure, it's not terms. unprecedented in politics. This it has happened it many, has? many times. Many times. Uh, there's some famous, uh, famous uh, Alabama governor, I believe, who ran his wife, Lurleen, in his mm. stead, and she won in a landslide because he was still running the show. Oh, okay. Um, I'll have to I'll have to look and, and see who that was. But for people who this sounds like a crazy conspiracy theory, um, too, just take a look at that man who just spoke about the blah, 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 the women, and tell me that you one hundred percent believe that that dude, that man is running this country. Well, tell me he's doing it. Uh, here's here's what we can here's what we can agree on. I think, I think that. The Democrats will do anything not to get Trump elected. So if we, if our, our jumping off point, Matt's back in studio. I'm sorry, it was uh, George Wallace's wife. George oh, okay. Wallace ran his wife, Lurleen. Um, Democrats are with the anyone but him mentality, right? That we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, well, with. we're talking about the feasibility of Michelle Obama parachuting in in the last moment. Zero would be a high estimate. You say zero. I say <laughs> I say everything's on the table. No, only she, because it, of what I've seen over the last few years. People overestimate in interpreting Barack Obama. They they still think like there's some mystery to him. Barack Obama's a pretty simple guy. Like he, you know, and that was for both the things I liked about him and the things I didn't like about him. He'll admit many times Michelle hated him being president. 
other than yes. the power. He kept on talking about how, uh, in, in, even in terms of, everyone, uh, oh, Barack Obama's operating the levers of power behind the scenes the entire, no, he's not. He's sitting there in his $18 million house smoking weed and enjoying his money, okay? He doesn't want to get involved. He's one of, like, other than George W. Bush, who just, like, left the public sphere entirely, and it's like, uh, uh, he men in black, like, zapped everyone's memory that he even existed, <laughs> right? Because he, he, he left with such shame. Realizing. Barack Obama's just there enjoying his money he's not involved and his wife didn't like him being there in the spotlight and all the stress that he dealt with like she doesn't want that well, and also also she's not popular hold okay on, hold we'll on yeah we have the clip of uh marvels in the mouth again with uh obama and biden did we play that one on this show or something we played show? it on the show before but you yeah they got him standing there he's he's there matt he showed up yeah, every once in a while, he's going to be there. He's the ex-president. He'll <laughs> he pop in. smoking weed in Maui. He came, yeah, a handful of times over the course of three, what four Matt's years. What Matt's saying is, is he's wearing a jacket and tie, but he probably has board shorts on and flip-flops <laughs> underneath that. Is that what you're saying, Matt? It's not it's out bad. of the question, but hey, over the course of three to four years, he's going to put on a suit and go do an appearance here and there for people. That's like uh, of the last 1,000 days or however many since he was left office, how many of those have been spent actively on political items? I guarantee you was not 10%. I gar I, I'm with you that she would not want to be president. I've heard that heard that many many times you think kamala's letting her get leapfrogged same thing with the newsom thing <clears throat> everyone do you think there's any reality in possible where they're gonna with the democratic party in 2024 is gonna leapfrog kamala to go put gavin newsom in there every kamala ite is going to lose their mind yeah i'm just wondering what they're gonna do i'm, I'm with, with you on that with biden I'm with you on they will make some attempt that we can't necessarily anticipate right now to stop trump but I don't think, and I wasn't at the same place about a year ago because they were they went all out in 2020. They pulled out all the stops to to make sure Trump didn't get in there. And I thought they were going to do the same thing with trying to prosecute him. But now I'm looking at it. I I, I was wrong. They're not going to get any of these trials before the election. They can't do it. So without that, I'm wondering. Okay, what's their next tactic? I don't necessarily know. Dwayne Johnson. <laughs> no, Joe Biden's going to be the nominee. All right, I'll He's put having money on trouble. It. All right, next story. All right, so you were talking about how uh, when Trevor Noah won the Emmy, mm -hmm. uh, nobody really watches The Daily Show anymore. You, like, you don't really watch it. Well, you might want to start watching it now because they have finally found a new host. Oh, yeah. Mike oh, really? Tell me this. Yeah. Okay, who was it? It is Jon Stewart. <laughs> yeah. He's the, just doing Mondays. Yeah, so he's going to return oh, in a God. limited capacity as host on Monday nights, and then uh, correspondents will handle the rest of the week's broadcasts. Uh, this this return to the show comes after Noah's exit prompted a long search for a new host. Mm -hmm. Hassan Minaj was actually the front runner until that profiler that profile in the New Yorker came out. Oh, really? About his uh, stand up having embellished anecdotes about racism in this country. Yeah, fucking making yeah. it a worse place to live. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, so he was. Yeah, he was in the running, but now uh, John Stewart is back, and I will be tuning in. <laughs> well, what what they do is what what. Biden did with Kamala Harris, which is you make this proclamation. They don't really make the proclamation, but the black guy's leaving and we're going to replace him with a person of color or a woman or a woman of color or somebody has some. Inter Someone from Minnesota's new council. Yeah, that's right. We need some intersectional bona fides, right? Under 40, for sure. Once you do that, you, the pool shrinks. The pool gets much smaller, much faster, and then you have difficulty. Like the reason we have Kamala Harris is because they announce it's going to be a female. Oh, oh, shrink it down. Oh, it's going to be a female of color. Oh, it just got smaller. And lo and behold, we have an imbecile. If you'd open it up to gingers with a cock and balls, then if you just open up to every possible candidate, then you'd have a, a better outcome. And you probably would have found somebody who would have fulfilled your requirements, but you shrunk it down, and now we're having difficulty. They shrink it down even further because it's not just they fit the, demo the demographic oh, boxes. Oh, yeah, Candace Owens is off the yeah, <laughs> She's but even, out. Forget Candace Owens, someone who's even more in the middle, Tulsi Gabbard. Tulsi Gabbard is a woman of color and is like a left pinky is smarter than any of these people <laughs> that we're discussing. Right. I mean, by far, um, the, the perfect example with the Harvard Isn't it Gabbard? 
Gabbard. I'm, who, yes, right, I'm going to fuck that up. Anyway. All right. Um, situation with Harvard. Claudine Gay. There were other African-Americans who got there's one of the African-American professors that she punished was a guy named Roland Fryer. Mm-hmm. Roland Fryer's academic record was like exponentially more significant than Claudine Gay's. Roland Fryer wasn't a big DEI uh, evangelist. Right. Right. So it's not just that they need to fit the demographics. They also have to be super DEI. OK, no, you bring up a very valid point. It's it's not enough just to be black or be female or be gay because Dave Rubin wouldn't get the gig. No, you have to ideologically agree with all of their insanity. And now you've really shrunk that pool. And so that what you end up with is not racism. great candidates. Yes, it is. It is racism. What it's did not Roland, diversity. It's racism. What did Roland Fryer do? Say something like um I think he got accused. Well, one, his scholarship showed his scholarship. This is African American male professor at Harvard. Scholarship showed that there was no police bias in police. Oh, shootings. that was the problem. Yeah, but that's, that's a <laughs> big love, no-no. I love when you deliver accurate data to them, and they go, "Okay, this guy, we got a yeah. deep six. Got to get rid of this guy. He's got to be gone. He's got to be silenced." Yeah, so when the flimsiest uh, imaginable sexual harassment accusations were made against him, of course, uh, everyone right. believed all women, particularly this woman, and Roland Fryer had to, Fryer, uh, Fryer had to go. It's so nauseating. It's insane. <laughs> it's insane, and it's anti-American, and it should be nauseating to people. And that's the part that scares me. Like right before my mom died, I was like, "Oh, you got you, Larry Elder or Gavin Newsom?" He's like, "I don't know who Larry Elder is. I know Gavin Newsom. I'm going Gavin Newsom." Mm. And I'm like, Ugh. "You just can't. You just ne- never." Not, I've nothing. been pulling my hair. I, I've been pulling my hair out for eight, nine years now. And yes, and, and, and incrementally, waves of people now. I get to give I told you so and that's gratifying in a number of different directions but I mean like I even I had to got got into it with some friends the you know a couple of weeks ago not you know that hostile but I said you should be as crazy about this as I am like <laughs> you know you agree with everything I say and but you take a different posture towards it because you don't want to deal with the you don't want to deal with the smoke and I said no I'm not crazy you not being crazy is what's crazy had right. you been at had you had the same stance on this as I did in 2018, we could have cut a lot of this stuff off uh, at the head. We could have prevented a lot of it. But now we have a, a much tougher battle ahead to reverse all this stuff. And yeah, the fact that you don't look at these things and think, what planet are we on? This is insane. That's a pro- that's your you, that's your problem. You should be thinking this is that insane. Look, it's everyone's fault but mine. Yeah, I've no, said it a million times. If anything's true, the, that's it. The day they closed the beaches is the day we all should have just went to the beach. <laughs> and and I was happy to do it, and nobody would join me. And that's what fucked us. Preferred pronouns. <clears throat> Go tell no. a liberal from 2010, right. not 2000, not 1994. <clears throat> right. Go tell a, a liberal Democratic voter 2010 about preferred pronouns. They look at you like you're an alien. Like, what the you fuck? probably go what? 2015. Even, but it was starting to creep in. Then I was 2014, 15, when all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I'd see, see kind of more, slightly more liberal than me, uh, people just uh, supporting the most insane ideas those that are, are imaginable. Those are going away, though, right? I don't yes. think I've really. Been I don't them. know, buddy. They're, they're, I, they're sliding. I, I, well, look, shit that has zero utility starts to slough off. It. I'm not saying it slides off overnight. It just kind of sloughs off. The stuff that they claim is important, like voter ID. What happened to all the voter ID talk? Where Democratic friends, remember that was a major core issue for you was voter ID. I don't hear you bring it up anymore. What about uh, banning books in Florida? What about the rewriting of the history with slavery? Like, what about all these preferred pronouns? Shit you never cared about, pretended you cared about a lot, and have immediately forgotten about? Right. It means you never cared about it in the first place, because why aren't you talking about this thing? They're black people out there who don't have IDs. Get the ID mobile fired up and bring it to the inner city. Let's get these people IDs. I never hear a fucking word because you never cared about it in the first place. They never gave a shit about pronouns. That was all about compliance. They were seeing, hey, buddy, I'm going to need you to lay on the ground, kick your legs over your head, and suck your own cock for me. And then you went, what the fuck? I'm not doing that. You want to get fired? Yeah. And he went, all right, can you help me with my belt? And that's what those (laughs) fucking pussies did. That's That's what they all did. I, I Listen, everyone should have went, fuck you. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what a pronoun is. Fuck right off. I'm not giving you my pronouns. It's not interesting. My kids go to a school 
their team name is the Spartans. The Spartans, the world's deadliest fighting fighting force. And when when the principal writes you a letter, he has his pronouns under it. Yeah. I represent the Spartans. He, me, it. Oh, Adam, I get emails from the stuffiest law firms on the face of the planet. Dude, everybody, you can't, you know, your tie's out of place. You get fired. They got pronouns and bio. Uh, it is bonkers, right. man. And what you mentioned about Douglas Murray said, put it well. He said, the gender thing is that important to them because if they can convince you of something that crazy, they can convince you of anything. Yes, that's why the, you know, birthing people <gasps> and chest feeders and shit like that. Yeah, it's all, look, if we can convince people that uh, hippos can fly, then we can certainly pass along some other green agenda that they'll go along with where they don't want to do the fucking science on. Yeah, that's that's the plan. All of it should have been rejected from Jump Street. Right. All right, Max Banner. All right, so Boeing. Boeing. Yeah, they're... Uh there's a lot of stories coming out about them. Uh, one, you know, that door that blew off that mm-hmm. that jet. And then uh, there's another report that uh, the Alaska Airlines CEO said that they found many loose bolts mm-hmm. on some of their 737s, like nine planes, mm-hmm. uh, er- earlier this month. And now another story just came out. A Boeing passenger's uh, jet's nose wheel just fell off before takeoff. Oh, great. I'm going to be on one later I today. know. Sorry, it's I, maybe be this awesome. isn't the best story maybe <laughs> on the day you're flying, mm-hmm. but these planes are falling apart. Terrorist alert in Vegas. So Boeing's declined to comment. They're like, hey, this is the airline. They're uh, directing the, everyone in the airlines because it, it, like, a lot of people are saying it's a Delta. This, uh, this nose wheel is actually on Delta. They're like, Delta should be checking these planes. Mm-hmm. Well, they brought all this DEI stuff up, and, uh, and I'll tell you the problem fundamentally, which is, I don't know if any of this has to do with any like affirmative action hires or something. It's just when you start putting that idea in the public's head, when you say the next vice president's gonna be female of color, then we all go, oh, so is she that qualified or is she that? And when you announce that uh, by the year 2030, half of our pilots at United Airlines are gonna be people of color and women, then then we gotta walk into the cock, we gotta walk on a plane and see the two black chicks in the cockpit and go, are they really the most qualified? it's they may be. But you guys introduced those ideas exactly. yeah, into correct. our head. And, and when we see Claudine Gay get in front of Congress, your very first thought is, is she the wisest? Is she the smartest? Is she the most qualified? She's the most qualified? Now, I don't, I never met her. And at that time, I had no idea about plagiarism or what her history or credentials were. So I had no thoughts other than, it's all three women? All three women present. Huh, not a dude in there. Oh, and Harvard's got the black chick. Hmm. I'll bet she wasn't the most. Now, I don't even want to go there. And again, the beauty of sports, because when you fucking turn on the NFL Sunday and all 11 players on the defensive side of the ball and the Ravens are black, you never have a thought. (laughs) Not one thought. There's not one ginger. Come on. There's not one husky white guy that couldn't be playing cornerback. Come on. Never. You never have the thought, but you've now forced us to have this thought. And shame on you. And the th- once again, we didn't not make any progress on gender and race relations without this stuff. We made a ton of progress. We had gotten it to a place where everyone was pretty well positioned. Go look at go look at uh, polls taken from various ethnic groups about race relations in the late 2000s, early 2010s. They're all extremely positive. Sometime around 2013, that chart starts plummeting, okay? Introducing these ideas is what has made everything so divisive. It's what's contaminated the relationships between people and groups, and it's just made everything worse. You want to know why, though? That is what propelled it? Think or no? Condescending think. I know. What do you think? (laughs) No? What do I know? Sure. I'd like to know, know what you know. Sure. I'll tell you what In I know. In many realms. Okay. I'll tell you what I know. What I know is this country had always used the yardstick to measure when racism was completely through and over and we could stop talking about it. It was the election of the first black president. That's That was, it wasn't 
even really anecdotal. It was anecdotal, but I mean, when comedians would go, you know, first black president, it wasn't the first black fill in the blank head yeah. coach or anything. When this country decides to elect a black president, that'll be the day we can stop talking about racism and turn the page. It was basically agreed on through the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, with a lot of jokes about it's never going to happen or he's going to have to run serpentine you know, to Air Force <laughs> One or whatever. Every comedian, every hackneyed comedian, even Eddie Murphy, by the way, would have a whole routine. Or, Could you imagine a first black president? And they're showing him running, you know, dodging bullets, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. But then Obama got elected and then he got elected to a second term and the second term is when everyone all the hustlers and all the new york times la times all the people that make a living with the grift of racism basically went we got to work overtime now we got to find racism where we're going to start looking under rocks but we are going to go nuts on racism because this is a much tougher task because we're now in a second term of a black president and they went overtime and they went hard and all of a sudden all of a sudden, boulders at colleges became racist symbols, stuff you never even thought about before. Oh, uh, the, the uh, pull rope and the NASCAR paddock was, had a loop on it. You know, that's a that, that could have been a noose, you know, or somebody hung up hoops at a park in Oakland. That must have been that must be a noose. You know, Our, we the media. And mostly Democrats went, okay, we got to get this hustle. We're losing our grip on the hustle. Now it's all fucking focus here. And we all went nuts. It was so much better before Obama got in and and then hit its peak when he left. And then they all went, now it's a full-time job for us, this whole racism you, thing. You ever hear the term white privilege before 2013? No. No. That's a grotesque term. That's yes. who on who, the fucking balls on anybody to use that term to try to just like implant the notion of somebody having elevated like uh, uh, your that your your life quality is a function just of that. It's like no people's life. The quality of a person's life is the function of dozens of different elements, right? Yeah. And it's just like to to assume these things about people based on the color of their skin. Didn't we spend 30, 40 years trying to get rid of that? One hundred percent. So there you go. We got a two term black president and all the two-term. hustlers went, all right, now I got my work cut out for me. Uh, Matt, our next guest is uh, queued up in the waiting room, so let me give you a plug. The prevailing narrative, that's Matt Belinsky. Uh, Check out his tweet at Matt Belinsky as well. Get to the bottom of this, or at least be caught up on all that's going on with the Times and and much more. Thanks for uh, coming in on short notice. My pleasure. Thank you so much for having me.